Last time, we began a story where Mr. Satan was actually strong. But now that he's met our main group, how far does his strength truly go? We'll be seeing all that and more in this part 2 of what if Mr. Satan was strong. By now, we've obviously arrived at the part where the tournament's about to begin. Videl and Gohan still do train together a bit, but she's not learning how to fly, because she already knows how to fly, and also how to use key and everything. She just thinks they'll be good training partners to warm themselves up for the tournament. As for Mr. Satan, he's doing training of his own. Of course, he did spend a lot of time with Master Roshi to get better control on his key. At least, in terms of projecting it into Key Blast. But besides that, he didn't really need much training because he was already a master martial artist. But still, now he knows that there's a lot of other strong people like him around here, he needs to defend his title as champion, so he trains pretty vigorously. The tournament consists of pretty much the exact same lineup I had before. The only difference is, Goku doesn't have a Halo. He's actually supposed to be here. Krillin also ended up meeting Android 18 again, so she's here as well. Our first big change comes in Videl's fight against Spopovich. Spopovich and Yamu have a new goal here, actually. They want to get some energy from Mr. Satan, and to do that, all they have to do is just beat up Videl. Just make him angry enough to jump in the ring, and then they can go for it. What they don't realize is that Videl's also really strong. To try and make it go quick, she just one-taps Bobovich, not interested in dragging this fight out. He sent a flying clean out of the ring. They didn't see that coming, and now, they're going to have to improvise some other way. And their chance comes when Gohan's against Kibito. Kibito tries to get Gohan to power up to his fullest, and he does, which lets Bobovich and Yamu jump in to try and steal his energy, while Shin and Kibito paralyze him so he doesn't move out of the way. But right as they're about to jump in the ring, someone stops them. Mr. Satan. He tells them to not interfere with this fight. It's very unsportsmanlike. What, are they mad because one of them lost to his daughter? How ridiculous. They try and fight him, but he easily wards them off, single-handedly beating both of them, with the crowd cheering as it all happens. Gohan then powers down. How weird, it felt like he was frozen in place for a second. He fights Kibito and actually easily wins here, not backing down against him like Piccolo did with his shin. He apologizes though, but, I mean, it's a tournament, he doesn't really have a choice here. Right before the next match is about to begin, somebody else appears in the middle of the tournament arena. They couldn't do this the easy way, could they? So, Deborah had to be sent in to handle it himself. First order of business, punish Spopovich and Yamu. Quickly, he turns to them and spits on them, turning them to stone. Which is at least good for everybody else, because now they know Deborah's trick. And they don't need to worry about those two anymore. Especially because Deborah goes up to them, flicking them over and breaking them. So now they're just actually dead. So, unluckily for Deborah, everyone then starts jumping him. First is Mr. Satan pissed off at someone else trying to interrupt the tournament. And while the others realize that something bad's going on, they all go to help, but Mr. Satan actually has it under control. Although with the others helping, Deborah has no choice but to retreat. He didn't realize that they were all this powerful. He was going to try and steal some energy himself, but first of all, he accidentally revealed the fact that he could turn people to stone pretty early on. So, they're keen to avoid it. But second of all, even though these people are strong, he doesn't see how he's supposed to get them in one place to actually steal their energy. So, he ends up leaving. Shin and Kibito were actually about to help him, mainly so they could figure out where Bobby's place was. But it's pretty useless because Bobby could teleport him away, and Deborah could teleport himself away too. Because apparently, he could do this in one of the video games, so pretty convenient. He just teleports out there himself. But Mr. Satan notices something weird. He feels a sharp pain in his side. Amidst the fight, he didn't even realize. It looks like he got stabbed by that Deborah guy. But he valiantly proclaims to the crowd, he's fine. This isn't going to stop him. They all cheer him on, having stopped another villain that tried to stop the tournament. Although, he feels a little bit drained for some reason. Also, with all this weird stuff going on, Gohan wonders why he was frozen before he almost attacked Kibito. And nervously, Shin says that it must have been Bobbity. Or even Deborah. Deborah did turn those other two people into stone after all. But it looks like they might have taken some energy from Mr. Satan. Mr. Satan didn't get too much energy taken. He says he's still fine. He was so focused on the fight that he didn't even realize he got stabbed, so it must have not been too severe. And it really wasn't. Once Deborah gets back to Bobbity's ship, Bobbity could see he nearly has enough energy here. He didn't get a ton of energy from it, but he still got a little bit. But it's made up for with Deborah fighting. And hopefully once they come over here, he can get more. He might have to lure them to the ship somehow. So instead, he just tries to teleport all of them here outside of the ship. Bringing only the people he senses a lot of power in. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Mr. Satan, Videl, and Piccolo. With Shin and Kibito also there because he found it amusing that those two were there. And strangely enough, Shin and Kibito's plan actually ended up working. Although, in a much different way than they expected, but they found Bobby's ship at least. And it's a good thing no one found out that they almost tried to hurt Gohan to do that. They would have tried it with Videl, but they didn't realize she was that powerful. Nor Mr. Satan. They just knew that there were some pretty powerful Saiyans on Earth. But it looks like some of the Earthlings are strong too. Back at the tournament, the others were just left confused. Especially Krillin. What, was he not strong enough to go? Actually, on second thought, that's pretty good. Honestly, those guys seem pretty terrifying, so maybe it's good that he didn't get teleported there too. We love you, Krillin. And Deborah is nervously waiting there for them because he knows he's about to get jumped again. And the second they get there, that's exactly what happens. Shin warns them to not use too much energy because Bobbity's going to probably try and steal it somehow. And on top of that, whatever damage Deborah inflicts on them, he's going to absorb that too. But the fight's pretty quick. 
especially because Vegeta wastes no time. With the full power final flash, he eliminates Tabora. He was already pretty beaten up from before, so he's easy pickings. Now they have to get to Bobbity somehow, and Bobbity needs to stall them just a little bit longer. But nothing's working. They fight Pui Pui, then Yakon, and then they're supposed to fight Tabora, but he's already dead. He has no one to hold him off any longer. He's gonna have to find some other way to get their energy. And as much as he hates to do it, it looks like he's gonna have to do it on his own. He actually did try and take over Vegeta, but it didn't work this time around. With Goku alive, he's not gonna turn Majin. So, basically because he's angry at Vegeta, he decides to pick on Vegeta. Also, he was the one to kill Deborah. Bobbity teleports Vegeta down to where he is. And the instant that Vegeta gets down there, he stabs Vegeta, stealing his energy too. Draining everything that he can until he gets just enough to revive Boo. Everyone gets down to the final level and sees that Vegeta's unconscious. Bobbity's pretty surprised that worked, but his magic is powerful after all. He created a nice little shield for himself, and Vegeta did try to attack him, but it didn't do anything with that shield. Plus, it's not tough for Bobbity to paralyze him too. Without those two things and him draining Vegeta's energy, he would have been cooked pretty easily. And then suddenly, they're all teleported outside of the ship, seeing Boo's egg pretty clearly in front of them. As it starts to hatch, Kabito quickly heals Vegeta, who doesn't even realize what happened, but he tells them that Bobbity tried to take over his mind as well. That coward couldn't do anything himself, could he? So as Bobbity excitedly waits for the egg to hatch, Vegeta then lifts up a hand, launching a small blast at him, then disintegrated by Vegeta's attack. Shin and Kabito don't know if that was a good idea because now Boo's gonna awaken without anyone to control him. But Vegeta says it doesn't matter anyways. Actually, this might be better because shouldn't Boo not have an objective here? With Bobbity, he would have one. And by killing Bobbity, Vegeta gets his revenge, so he's satisfied. Actually, that might be true. From what Shin remembers, Boo is just mindlessly destructive, essentially. And if he's gonna fight regardless, this might be better. Boo finally awakens, but thankfully enough, they already have the group here to fight him and they're all pretty much a top shape. And with everyone's combined power, Hopefully it will be enough to actually defeat him. The only real issue is that this is Videl's first real fight that has huge stakes like this, at least in the sense that she's facing a world-ending threat. This is new to her. But she wouldn't be here if she didn't have the power to back it up. Honestly, for Mr. Satan, it's the same case here. He did fight Cell, but that was a lot easier than this is going to be. But for Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Piccolo, this is pretty much their run-of-the-mill fight. They're unfortunately used to this by now. And without Bobbity to order him around, Boo is actually just doing basically whatever he wants. His main focus is having fun and getting good food too. Although they get Boo to focus on them because they start fighting him pretty much instantly. So once more, they all jump the villain together. Pretty quickly, they also come to learn that Boo has pretty good regeneration. Like, really good. In fact, they're gonna have to destroy every little bit of him. Which, to be fair, they had to do with Cell anyways, but this is different. He's even more resilient than that, it seems. And he just brushes off any sort of damage on him. But maybe, just maybe, if they all combine their power together, it will be enough to stop Boo. He is strong, but with the most powerful warriors on the planet here, they could probably take him down quickly. And Mr. Satan has a trick in mind. He actually was waiting to show off a new move. He thinks this move is guaranteed to stun any sort of opponent. And if they could just stun him a bit, then they'll all be able to hit him at once with an attack. He's excited to finally show this off. It's not really something he could use during a tournament, but Mr. Satan tells him they have to work really quickly when he does this. He runs over to Boo, and Mr. Satan's leg starts glowing. For some reason, seeing Mr. Satan with a glowing leg reminds Vegeta of someone. He feels like he's seen this somewhere before, like he's supposed to be annoyed by this guy. Weird, he forgets about that. Mr. Satan looks like he's about to kick Boo, but instead, he does a point-blank Kamehameha. His own version of it, a dynamite Kamehameha. It does damage Boo a bit, and it launches him far up into the sky. See, the reason he did this point-blank is because not only did he hit him with the blast, but he also hit him with his hands, channeling a ton of his energy into Boo. Now, this attack takes a lot of his power, but it's sure to stun any sort of opponent. That Master Roshi guy taught him some sort of technique to paralyze people. He used some sort of Thundershock thing, and Goku knows that very well. So, is he using the same principle as that, essentially? Well, kind of. He's combining that into his regular attacks, and also using even more of his key too. With these point blank melee attacks, he's trying to hurt the opponent as much as possible, and as Boo falls down, he winds up a kick, with his leg glowing even more from his key. Boo tries to recollect himself midair, but it's already too late. He plummets back to the ground and Mr. Saiyan hits him with a powerful kick. He calls this the Ultra Super Special Dynamite Kick. Wow, really creative with the names, huh? But with all his energy charged into the kick, it courses through Boo, partially leaving him stunned. Not really hurting him a lot, but making it so he can't fight back. And he's kicked directly towards the Saiyans and Piccolo, who then notice that Videl's not there. She's beside Mr. Satan. And together, the two of them each charge their own Kamehameha. A father-daughter Kamehameha, if you will. Mr. Satan thought it looked cool when Goku did this a while back against Cell. As they launch their attack, the Saiyans all launch a combined blast with Piccolo joining in too. Boo's caught right in the middle of it, not even able to fight back. And it's basically a beam clash between the three of them, but to make it so they could use their full power and not accidentally harm the others, Shin and Kabito then use telekinesis to lift Boo up in the air, and now they put their full power into the blast, since they don't have to worry about colliding with anything on the other side. With the beams crossing midair, Boo is disintegrated right in the middle of them, as everyone expels their full power into it. And honestly, 
Goku thought that was pretty awesome, especially combining the Thundershock surprise technique into his kicks, and even a Kamehameha somehow, it's amazing. That's another thing about Mr. Satan in the story. Not only is he just actually a really strong fighter, but he's pretty much a prodigy here too. Although, a lot of the cool stuff he does is purely unintentional. He doesn't even know the reason behind his own power either. He's still a really strange case, but they're glad to see more of his strength here. The best part about all this is the fact that this is all broadcast to the tournament too. Mr. Satan reaches into one of his pockets and pulls out a camera that was attached to him the entire time. So the whole audience got a POV of what he was doing. It's a good thing he didn't lose here either because that was kind of risky. Not that he'd lose though, he is the world champ after all. Although, there was kind of an issue because the tournament went on without them with the Battle Royale. Which really bums Mr. Satan out because he wanted to be the world champ again. Although, he does retain his world champ status and everyone thinks this is better if anything. Even if he didn't win the tournament, he just went away to save the world. This makes the people love him even more. He didn't care about his stupid title in the tournament. He stopped the world from ending again. And Mr. Satan doesn't view it like that, but you know what? That's pretty good. It cheers him up at least a little bit. And strangely enough, in that video, they see all the other people there too. Gohan's classmates can recognize him, but nobody knows who the hell Goku or Vegeta are. At least, for the most part. And then that Ma Jr. guy. Weird. He looks strangely similar to that Piccolo guy from a while ago. Could that actually be Piccolo? Nah. The general Dragon Ball population is really stupid, and this guy has a different name, so surely it can't be him. But whoever all those people are, they're heroic figures aside Mr. Satan. Especially his daughter now, too. So, while the tournament was kind of a bust, at least they all got something out of it. And things are really going to start changing even more here. Because not too long after the tournament... Less than a year after, in fact, Beerus wakes up, because he had a different premonition this time. He was dreaming of something, a perfect rival, and he vaguely remembers from his dream. He remembers seeing some guy with puffy hair. The words world champ ring through his mind, but he can't remember the guy's name. Santa? Satin? Saiyan? No, it can't be any of those. Especially not Saiyan. They're all dead. But then it hits him. Mr. Satan. It has to be him. Especially with a name like that, he has to be some sort of godly rival, right? Beerus is excited to find him, and he heads out towards Earth. This is where we'll leave off for now. What do you guys think about this part, and what's going to happen next time, especially now that Beerus is awakened? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help with the channel, and it shows me you want to see more videos like this, especially with the series continuing. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.